I didn't really want to send a quarter of a million dollars back just because a trucker was two days late. Most people, when they ship a car, they'll just call Intercity or reliable carriers or whatever. They'll get in this queue and they'll get to it when they get to it. So they might not even pick up your car for two to three weeks. And you don't know that going in, you're just waiting for a truck that's happening to go that route. So if you want something done quickly, the average consumer has to go through a broker. I, of course, have access to a special load board that allows me to get truckers directly. And that's usually when these adventures start happening because you sometimes scrape the bottom of the barrel. The brokers do not always weed out who is actually shipping the truck. They're just going with the cheapest guy because they don't really care about your car. They just take their 200 bucks and move along. One of the most stressful ones was when I was shipping my Nissan GTR to Las Vegas from Ohio and I had to get it there in a week because I had a, a big event at my dealership in Vegas and I needed it there for that because I was going to give demo rides to people on the track. So I contracted with the company and I said I need the car there on Friday. No problem, the guy has to be out there anyway for something else. So the trucker shows up I talk to him and I say, just to confirm, you're going to be in Vegas by Friday, right? Absolutely. Yep. No problem. I will be there. You, you'll have your car for your event. I said, okay. Because if not, don't even take the car. He loads the car. I fly out to Vegas. Wednesday rolls around. I call the company. Hey, where are you at? Oh, he's in Arkansas, something like that. Uh, not making great time, but okay. Thursday rolls around. I say, hey, where are you at? He said, well, I actually, I broke down and I'm at this truck stop getting my truck fixed. I said, okay, where? And he said, well, I'm in, I think it was Arkansas, something like that. And he said, I'm at the, the Peterbilt truck stop. I said, okay, which one? I looked him up. There's two. I said, I'm going to fly in come find you and just drive my car back because it's a day drive, I can still make it back. And he couldn't tell me which one he was at. So I called the owner of the trucking company. I said, where's your guy? Oh yeah, yeah, he's broke down, this and that. I said, I need to know where I'm going to get my car. Couldn't give me a straight answer. So after getting a bunch of run around, I just said, forget this. I called up the owner of the trucking company I said, you need to tell me where your guy is at, otherwise I'm calling the Arkansas State Police and registering my car as stolen. Tell me where my car is. So turns out he was actually in Memphis. The guy decided to go home for the weekend because he's from Memphis. So he was at a Peterbilt truck stop, but not in Arkansas. He was not broken down. He, was, he wanted some barbecue. I was livid. Because I said, you guys guaranteed me delivery on Friday and you had absolutely zero intentions of doing this. And not only that, you as the owner of the company lied to cover up your trucker. The same thing. I said, listen, I know where he's at. Um, I'm sending somebody by to get his license plate number and all that. And I said, uh, I have another truck I've booked to pick up the car from him. No, 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 we're not going to release it. You've, you know, you have to pay us for the shipment. I said, once again, if you don't unload that car and give it to the other trucker, I'm calling the police, my car is stolen. Okay, fine, fine, we'll let it go. So I had a, a buddy of mine from Memphis go by, make sure he was actually at the truck stop and talk to the trucker. And then I had another uh, company go by and pick my car up off that truck and take it to me in Vegas, not by Friday, but it arrived <laughs> without detour. I did not pay them. Speaking of not paying, when the Porsche GT2 came out in 2008, I had one of the first ones and I sold it to a longtime good customer of mine in California. Given that he paid so much money over sticker, he wanted it right away. He deserved that. So again, I contracted with a company and said, I need the car there, guaranteed delivery 
by Saturday. I will pay whatever it takes to guarantee delivery because usually companies won't guarantee delivery unless you basically buy out the whole truck. Note, we'll charge you regular price. We have to be there this weekend anyway for a couple of other things. And I went back and forth. I said, no, I will pay you extra. I need guaranteed delivery. And this is a big, reputable company. Nope, we'll charge you normal price. The car will be there on Friday. Okay. Picked up the GT2. On its way. Friday rolls around. Nothing. Can't get a hold of the company. Never heard from the trucker. Saturday rolls around. Still nothing. So because it's a big company, they refuse to give us the trucker's actual number. And so they're sitting there waiting for the car and we can't get a hold of anybody going through their, you know, automated system and I'm just like this is ridiculous. So I guess the trucker finally called my customer and said, "Hey, you know, I got delayed something or other. I'll see you Monday." And the customer called me just absolutely livid. People with that kind of money, they change their mind based on their mood. And because he didn't have the car that Saturday, he wanted it to take to dinner or whatever, he was over it and he wanted to return the car. And I didn't really want to send a quarter of a million dollars back just because a trucker was two days late. Talked him down, I said, you know, I'm really sorry. It'll, it'll be there Monday, you know, if you still hate it you can send it back or whatever but let's try to keep this deal together and you know don't pay the trucker obviously i'll handle it with the transport company so it got delivered monday he didn't pay the trucker and so i called the company and you know aired my grievances and said we're not going to be paying you because this was absolutely ridiculous and i said listen if you have any issues you deal with me they called the customer on the delivery end tried to get money from him. They called the Porsche dealer in New York from whom they had picked up the car, who had nothing to do with any of this, tried to get money from them. Called the broker who had arranged the shipment for me, tried to get money from them. And of course, all three of them, they said, oh, well, Doug isn't paying us this and that, and so we're just trying to get paid. So they, they threw me under the bus and called everybody else, ended up uh, losing my customer in California because of this. Um, and, and I don't blame him at all. I mean, they, it was completely unprofessional how they handled it. And in, in hindsight, I would have just given him the $1,500 to, to keep him as a customer, but I didn't think they'd pull that kind of juvenile move. I said, stop calling people. You call me if you have a problem. If you want to chase me for the money, fine, but you're not getting paid because you didn't do the job right and you didn't communicate. So a couple months go by, don't think anything more of it. Their attorney calls me, says, hey, I'm trying to get paid for this shipping job. And so I just told him the story. And you hear him on the other end of the phone just go, oh, oh, I'm really sorry. We'll take care of this. Never heard from them again. <laughs> And that is, I, this is the first time in my life I've ever had a collections attorney apologize and say, oh, oh, wow, <laughs> that's bad. <laughs> One of the more odd things was I had a Nissan GTR delivered and I had a crispy piece of bacon just wrapped around the, the windshield wiper. And I'm kind of like, how did that get there? <laughs> that was one of the more odd things. But I had a, an Audi R8 picked up one time from an Audi dealer. And they called me after it got picked up. And they're like, who the heck did you send to pick this up? I said, well, you know, I don't know. I used a broker. It's an enclosed carrier, all that. They go, I, I don't know about this guy. And they didn't really give me many details. But the car shows up to my shop. And it was just a box truck. It wasn't even a car carrier. He didn't have e-tracks. He didn't have a loading ramp. He didn't have any. It was just a box truck and my R8 in it. And he had basically parked at an angle, turned the wheel all the way to the right so the front tire was wedged against one side of the box truck and then just set the e-brake. So we had to hire a flatbed to come back up to this box truck to unload the R8. And everything ended up being fine. 
I mean, super sketchy, but I call this Audi dealer. I'm like, okay, you let him take the car? You should have just not let him take the car, but it ended up being fine. All's well that ends well. <laughs>